What is up everyone? Uh, this is a bike that I bought for $20 cash on Facebook Marketplace. Someone is selling this bike as is and said it needs a little bit of the tuning. So um, being a handy person myself, I always love to restore old bikes. Um, if you saw my previous videos, um, I have worked on a lot of bikes and this one will probably be of a challenge because um, for $20, I mean, it's a great value just for the frame itself. This is a Jameis uh, Cross Country. It's one of the entry level um, hybrid uh, 26 inch bike that's designed for um, probably gravel riding back in the days. And uh, I already took the wheels off, but it did come with quick release wheels and a seven speed group set. So not terribly bad. Uh, it's a Shimano Acera group set. So again, entry level. And uh, taking a look at all the parts, there are a lot of rust on a lot of parts and bolts. So I have to do some more assessment of different parts uh, as we go and figure out what things needs to be replaced or what things can be restored. So very first thing I notice is um, there are quite a lot of rusty bolts here. So the first first thing I'm going to do, all the bolts are pretty much rusted. The very first thing I'm going to do is use my rust remover and we're just going to spray it all over and see if we are able to save this $20 bike. This is the, um, the big shot um, industrial size blaster. Uh, penetrating catalyst rust remover. Okay, so this thing, pretty strong stuff. Uh, spray on the onto the stuff, and hopefully it'll you know free up all the all the bolts and remove some of the rust that's currently on the bike. So yesterday I um, pretty much just uh, de-rusted the whole bike, and today I left it overnight. It actually seems to be in a pretty decent shape. Some of the rust that I've saw yesterday was mainly like pretty artificial. So it's not as deep of a rust. So I would assume most of the parts should be easily removable. Um, so as you can see from the video right now, like the whole bike actually looks, looks pretty okay. All the rust, most of the rust is gone. And uh, so this $20 <laughs> uh, definitely put some value back. So that's good. And this bolt, it looks rusty, but actually it's only surface rust. So thank God. And uh, the next step today is I'm gonna try to take the square taper bottom bracket out and just inspect the bottom bracket in general, because I would assume that's probably the area that's gonna be damaged the most since the whole thing is like wobbly as hell. So try to take the uh, non-drive side cranks out. The bolt looks rusted. Surprisingly, it's actually in quite good condition. So I was able to just very smoothly putting my crank puller. And the next step is I'm going to pull out the non-drive side. I'm going to try to loosen the um, the bottom bracket holder over here and try to take the drive side out as well when I flip it over to the other side. So uh, fingers crossed, hopefully nothing gets, nothing is too rusted. Hopefully everything is just surface rust. And let's see if we can uh, savage or maybe save this bottom bracket. So uh, more good news. I was able to very easily remove the square taper uh, crank set, non-drive side. Another good news is this bottom bracket actually uses a standard, uh, I guess, standard tool that I can use to just remove it very easily. This is Park 2 BBT 22. Uh, this spindle kind of a design is used in most of the modern day bottom brackets. And I can easily just put it there, use a uh, the wrench to actually twist it off. And uh, so that's another good news. Looks like I can very easily remove this uh, this crank set. So now I just flip the bike over. We're gonna remove the drive side crank set. I'm using just a a tweezer. Try to turn this thing and pop it out, and it's out. 
I'm gonna leave everything here because we're gonna use the rust remover on all those rusty bolts again in this little foam thing. So hopefully most of the stuff is gonna have the rust removed. Over here, all we have to do is remove this 14 millimeter bolt. And when I use my um, crank remover tool again, get this drive side out, then we're gonna inspect what the heck is going on with this uh, front derailleur that's like dangling and moving around. Hopefully we get to the bottom of this. Next, I'm gonna remove both of those uh, cover cups and we're gonna take the bottom bracket out. So I think I really lucked out because those cranks are actually in excellent shape as well and they are actually pretty light, uh, surprisingly. It's lighter than some of the modern setups like the modern Acera a seven speed group. That thing was pretty heavy and this is actually quite light. So I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. Again, all those bolts only rusted on the surface, so lucked out. Uh, we're just gonna remove those rust and they should work just, just that's good, okay? All right, guys, we are at the bottom of this, so it looks like the internal, uh, yeah, some slight rusting from property sitting outside for a while, but the rust is not too bad. Just, again, surface, surf, surface rust. And what I found out is this is actually a bottom bracket mounted front derailleur, which is pretty interesting. I don't know why they chose this design, but uh, uh, the derailleur seems to be in pretty good working condition. So I don't even know if I need to replace this derailleur. Um, but again, the chain slightly rusty as well, not terribly bad, again, usable. Uh, the only thing that I think is going to be a toast is the bottom bracket because this thing is pretty much rusted beyond control and the ball on the bottom bracket is also very rusted. I'm not going to try to restore that because regardless of what do you do, the ball is pitted and uh, when it glides through the rusted surface, it's just not going to be a good thing. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a replacement bottom bracket with the same spindle length and uh, uh, that should take care of, you know, the bottom bracket area and I can still reuse the original uh, crank set without any issue. So, so far I have determined that the parts that needs to be replaced are the bottom bracket and all the uh, caliper brakes, which were rusted and uh, were not in very good condition. Um, all the brake cables, and I'm still deciding whether I should use, or depending on what DR can find, either using the caliper brakes or just use regular V brakes. Now, if I'm using caliper brakes, those actually, one of the brake lever have to be replaced because the spring is dead. The other one is okay, but if I'm replacing them, I'm gonna be replacing them as a set. The shifters are no good, so I'm gonna get new shifters, seven speed shifters, and uh, the handlebar is actually kind of rusty. Depending on how well I remove those, I might get the handlebar replaced as well. So got the bottom bracket uh, installed, and I installed the crank. Not super hard, it's actually quite easy process when you have all the appropriate tools. The bottom bracket mounted uh, front derailleur is also installed. And I just lubricated the chain, so just gonna let it sit for a couple of days, let the lubrication soak in, and uh, it should have a pretty smooth ride. So on the handlebar, I have actually removed everything that needs to be replaced got the new parts coming in so uh stay tuned till i get the new parts and we're we'll install everything and have the bike uh up and running in no time so guys the restoration is finally complete on this james cross country um rigid 26 inch mountain or hybrid bike also great for gravel riding because of the thick, nice and knobby tires. Um, so since it's completed, I'm just gonna go through the whole bike and share with you guys what I did to the restoration of the bike. Now, when I first bought it, it was 
really rusted um, and just in general a very bad shape not much rideable now the bike is restored it's actually riding pretty smooth it shifts fantastic uh, on its 3x7 gear so great great for climbing those hills and uh, um, with brand new brakes those V brakes I got from Amazon and uh, they were eight dollars a pair great value it didn't come with the brake cable though so I have to use my own brake cable put on the new cable housing and uh, get the bike you know all set up and ready to go same with the V brakes so the V brakes are the Pro Max brand um, those I also got from Amazon I think they were about um, $14 or $12 something like that shipped and super affordable brakes for restoration again great value uh, of course it's not you know best performance out there because um, they are kind of squeegee because the um, the brake pad are those rubbery kind it's not those replaceable pads with a very rigid housing so uh, in terms of the feeling of the braking power it's it's not as good as the best V brakes out there but it's good enough to stop you know stop you from the danger whatever whenever you need so our I kept the original wheel sets and uh, it's looking pretty good I mean it's working pretty good and it's nice and true um, and the pedals original the crank set original I think those are Suntour crank sets works pretty good no complaints the bottom bracket is actually a um, brand new bottom bracket that I got on Amazon. Those are sealed cartridge bottom brackets. I think I spent about uh, $11 on those. Uh, replaced the old like um, ball, like ball and bearing uh, bottom bracket. So those are kind of rusted and they, the water really easy gets into those non-cartridge bottom brackets. So I'm really glad I put a cartridge one in there, which should last for a good long time. I kept the original. Um, those are actually bottom bracket mounted um, front derailleur. This is a Shimano. I believe it's a Serra X uh, front derailleurs. Again, those are vintage classic derailleurs that you can find in the mountain bikes back in the days. Very reliable, very well built and easy to shift. And again, have the brake cables all and shifter cables all replaced. So brand new shifter cables and housing. I have a beautiful red cable running just to add a little touch of the color uh, for the bike. And on the back, it's that Sam Pro Max um, brakes. Those Pro Max, again, great value but in terms of performance it's it's not the best uh, or top of the line out there so i've seen better brakes that performs better um, but they are very affordable so if you have uh, a budget restraint give those a try and i also have an individual unboxing review for those brakes as well uh, now the wheel set it's working fine and uh the tires probably need a replacement soon, but for now they work fine and they hold the air perfectly fine. Original seats, uh, those classic, uh, you know, two clamp seats uh, that you find in the old bikes in back in the days. And this is actually a original Jamie's uh, saddle over here. Could probably use a replacement soon, but it's working fine. So I didn't replace it. And the cockpit, the, the shifter is actually a uh, Taiwanese made micro shift, uh, seven speed shifters. This is a three by seven setup. Works beautifully. It actually shifts very smooth and a very light action. So it's really easy to shift for both the front and the back. So I really have no complaints about those shifters. And if I have another restoration project, I would probably give those micro shift uh, shifters another try. I think they work actually just as good as Shimano's entry level shifters out there, uh, like the Acera shifters. They feel pretty much the same. Actually, if not, it actually feels a little more smoother than the Acera shifters. It's you really need to ride it to have it shifted, but it's it's super smooth. There's no weird noise when you're shifting, 
and it shifts nice and precise. So I'm gonna flip the bike just a little bit. So take a look at the group set uh, over here. So again, this is the other side of the bike. I spent um, yesterday night actually uh, polishing the bike. So the paint is uh, almost all restored. It's nice and shiny for the most part. As you can see, beautiful chromoly frame. Um, back in the day, and this is TIG welded, so it, with some lugs present over here. But again, um, just in general, a nice bike to ride. And honestly, um, I know nowadays people spend outrageous amount of money buying gravel bikes um, that, you know, they're probably not even gonna hit the gravel trail anytime soon. And for the most part, they're probably just gonna use the gravel bikes on the road, uh, which I think will be a waste of, you know, the purpose of the gravel bike. Right? For the real gravel riding, I still think those 26 inch mountain bikes are your best bet because they're very nimble, they're very agile because of the smaller wheels and uh, those knobby tires, obviously. So it's gonna give you a very supple ride on the gravel and uh, you could probably even try to take the cross country onto a single track and give it a, a nice spin. And uh, granted, if your knees are good, if your arms and legs, you know, still in good shape, you can absorb those bumps yourself. And you really don't need a, um, like a, a suspension set. And again, like if you're going budget, those low end suspensions are, are really just not good at all. Like they pretty much break uh, after probably one or even two seasons and then you have to get a, a, a new like a suspension setup. Otherwise your bike is pretty much useless. But then again, rigid setup, 26 inch. Um, I think, I personally think this is a great setup for city commuting as well as, you know, on the gravel riding or even just a nice ride around your local parks and really couldn't find another better value than a nicely restored bike. So. The very last thing I want to show you is this beautiful Acera X um, seven speed shifter. Now those are, you know, back in the days, uh, pretty much bomb proof uh, shifters. They, I don't ever think they are gonna break because it's all metal and it actually shifts very precisely. It's SIS indexed. So really no issues on those shifters at all. And again, they are definitely gonna last you longer than those newer um, Acera shifters because the newer ones actually are, I, I personally think inferior quality or less quality than the back in the days, the old Acera group sets. And again, triple crank in the front. I think this is 22, 32, 42. Quote me if I'm wrong, but again, a really nice setup for general purpose riding. So if you guys have any questions about this bike restoration project, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below. Otherwise, I hope you found this video actually helpful in helping you make a decision on whether you should restore one of those bikes yourself. Thumbs up if you found the video helpful and subscribe uh, because I should have more of those restoration videos coming out for you guys. Thanks again and uh, take care.